Hey everybody, this week on Archery 101, we're going to talk about tuning a classical bow. Hey everybody, Greg here. You know, if you're into archery, especially traditional archery, people are going to ask you, how is your bow tuned? Or how did you tune your bow? Or even, is it tuned at all? Now, tuning the bow, think about it. We got two parts to a bow. We have the bow itself and the string for a traditional bow. That's it. So how can tuning help us? And that's what we're going to cover today. Now the first thing we need to know is what is tuning. And the best way that I can explain it to you is tuning is a process to make the bow perform in the manner you desire by making minor adjustments to the brace height and knocking point of the bow. All right, that's a big, you know, sounds really important, but that's it. That's really it. It's broken down. Now the big things here is what do you want to do with your archery? And that's going to determine how you're going to tune your bow. So, once you decide it, what you want to do. If you're a hunter, a target archer, whatever, that's going to determine some of the things you're going to do for tuning your bow. So what's the benefits of tuning? Well, primarily there's three of them. And the first one is tuning can affect the amount of sound that your bow gives off upon release. Right here I have my wife's 1969 Ben Pearson Collegian. This is only a 20 pounder and back in the old days they called this a semi-recurve. Now every bow has its own harmonics. Sounds. If I grab this string and I pull it up a little bit and let it go, there's the harmonics. And that's when it runs out of my ear range. Now there's many people, especially hunters, that don't like sound because they believe the animal will jump the string. So you want to make your bow as quiet as possible. Now if you're a target archer shooting indoors, who cares? All right, so it's what you want. If you want it, just the volume, tuning can help you. The other thing you can do is adjust the level of vibration in the bow that's transmitted to your hand. Now many people call this hand shock. And I have shot in some bows that I actually felt this, the harmonics, get transferred into my hand and I felt it all the way up into my shoulder and my neck. That's how rough they were. All right. Now, again, depending on what you want, will depend on how much of that you're willing to tolerate. But that's something else you can do. And the last thing that tuning your bow will affect is the flight of the arrow. When you release this bow, that arrow is going to launch off and it's only going to do one thing. It's either going to fly straight or it's going to porpoise. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Left to right motions on your arrow, usually spine. Porpoising, sorry, up and down, knock point. And that's something you can adjust. So there's the three things that we can affect with tuning. So now that we know what tuning is about, and what's the benefits of it? If you want to tune, it's real simple. Remember, there's two whole parts to this thing. All right, the first thing we can do, in effect, is the brace height. Now, the vast majority of boyers, people that build bows, will do the brace height from the deepest part of the handle to the string. There's a small minority, but they are out there that measure the brace height from the back of the riser by the shelf to the string. So make sure, if you can, to find out which one they did. Now all manufacturers have a recommended brace height. This one is six and three quarters to seven and a half. Now if you can't find yours, that presents a problem, doesn't it? Generally speaking, this is not an absolute law, most longbow style bows, the brace height's anywhere between six and a half and seven and a half. Most recurves are seven and a half and eight and a half. 
So there you have it. Now, you got your bow, you got a string. Depending on what type of string you have, if you have a Dacron string, it has a stretch factor that you're going to have to adjust for. And what I suggest you do is you put that string on the bow and you let it sit for a while because the pressure on this bow is going to stretch it out. So before you go putting your knock point on, let that thing stretch out. Now I had a 40 pound Ben Pearson Palomino that I put a brand new string on, measured my brace height, let it sit overnight, and it stretched almost a full half inch in a 24 hour period of time. So make sure you take that into account. All right, so now we got it. She's stretched, she's ready to go. Now, to measure your brace height, you can buy this really nifty little thing called a bow straight, bow square, or a T, whatever you want to call it. And all you do is set it there, deepest part, put it against it. And this shows me that I am one, about a sixteenth of an inch past seven and a half. Now this is a brand new string. I just pulled it out for this. Now if you don't want to buy that, you can do like 99% of us, just use a tech me measure or a ruler. So put that in there, and this, interestingly, has it at exactly seven and a half. So there's a sixteenth of an inch difference between my ruler and my little square. So you got it, right? We're at seven and a half, which is in the outside part of the envelope for this bow. Six and three quarters, seven and a half, correct? So what you're going to do now, just going to get an arrow. And I have one right here. What you also want to, we're not going to discuss about arrows and all that, you know, the spines and all that. You're just going to get your arrow, click it around there. Do not put a knock point on it. No knock point. Do not put a knock point on it. And shoot it a couple times. We don't care if it hits the target out. What you're doing is listening to the sound and feeling the hand vibration. All right. So let's say we did that. And our arrow made a little bit of noise, but not much. Now, here's the big question. Do we go up or down? Now, obviously this one is at the max, so you'd actually try to go down. And that's how you do it. You're going to adjust. How do you adjust it? You take the string off the bow and you twist it, which we're going to do now. I'm going to step back here. I'm going to do what nobody tells you to do, but this is how I learned, and I've been doing it for years, is to step through. Now, before you yell at me, tell me I'm stupid, I do have a stringer. And I use that 99.99% of the time. This is a 20 pound bow. I'm not going to hurt it. I step through, wrap it around my shin, simply push forward and it comes off. That's that easy. To adjust your brace height is you twist the string. How you twist it's up to you. Now a lot of people with Flemish twist, twist a certain way. This is an endless loop so it don't matter. I'm going to twist it 10 times and we'll see how much of a difference I make, okay? One, two. Eight, nine, or ten. All right, I adjusted. Now I'm doing a hypothetical here. All right, just to show you, this is not an actual adjustment because why would I make a bowstring shorter when it's already at the max? We were at seven and a half exactly. We are now. I gained probably one to two sixteenths or an eighth. All right, yeah, I gained about an eighth of an inch. So there you go. 10 twist and this bow gave me an eighth of an inch difference. So you can see if I had to move a half an inch, I'd have a lot of twisting to do. If I wanted to make this proper, I would buy a little bit longer string. This is a 54 inch string and a 60 inch bow. Alright, so now we got this. So you're playing with it, you go up, if it gets louder, what does that tell you? We got to go down and you know, release it. So if you tighten it, what are you going to do? You're going to bring the ends in tighter. If you loosen it, you're going to bring them farther out. You do that till the hand shock and sound is where you want it. And then you got that part of tuning finished. And our last part is the knock point. And that affects porpoising. You take this, you take your bow right here, lay it right on the rest. It has a little, little indentations. You click it, and there you go. Now everybody has their own preferences. And right here is zero. That's where the shelf is. Some people do a, a half an inch, three quarters. It's all up to you. What I do is I don't use the T-square. I use it to measure my brace height when I go out shooting. Okay? What I do, and I just find it easier. I'm a visual person. I learn visually. So I take an arrow, place it on there, 
and I get it flush on my bow. And then I shoot it, and I watch how it goes. If it didn't go like I wanted, I got some porpoising, then the next time I knock it, I push it up or down, depending on how it goes. You play with it. You're going to find that sweet spot. Once you find that sweet spot, mark that, and then you put on your knock. And now, we've, by adjusting our brace height, we eliminated sound and hand vibration. By getting our knock point, we got our arrows flying straight. Congratulations. That's how you tune your bow. It's real simple, boys and girls, and it does have benefits. All right, but I'm going to tell you this much. A bow is an amazingly forgiving tool. Some of my bows, I shoot, and people go, you can't shoot like that, and then I love beating them. I shoot with my arrow sitting that high up on some of them. Why? It's my indoor target bow, and it gets my point on closer to my target. I have other bows that shoot totally flat, all right? You got to find what works for you. Don't take what some know-it-all tells you. And I know what you think, but Greg, you're on YouTube, you're an old all No, I'm not. I'm telling you to find out what works for you. Experiment. All right, we are all different. How I shoot is different than how you shoot. It's different than how the next guy shoots. But tune your bow, and you're going to get pretty good performance. You can shoot for years and never tune your bow and still get great performance. But the difference is when you start getting up in the upper echelon of archers, it's those little things that make a difference. So it's totally up to you whether you want to tune your bow or not. All right, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, Give me a thumbs down. You got a question or something to say, put it in the comments down below. If you haven't, please subscribe. And I'll see you next week on Archery 101.